cool. I think uh, we can get started here. So um, today we have AJ from uh, Tezos Commons. Uh, he's going to talk to us about the Tezos ecosystem as a whole, including like the governance stuff, different different projects going on, and uh, Tezos is proof of stake. So um, yeah, if you have any anyone have any questions, please feel free to toss it into the Q and A or the um, chat. But otherwise, yeah, take it away, AJ. Thanks, Spencer. Hey guys, it's, it's uh, AJ from Tezos Commons. Um, so I'll just dive into four topics today. Uh, one's going to be the, about the Commons itself, uh, the community, the ecosystem, and one of the most unique propositions of Tezos Protocol, which is the governance aspect. And so let's go into the Commons. So what is Tezos Commons? We are a grassroots organization. We're born from the community. Um, it mostly consists of community members since the fundraiser banding together, help launching the network, um, creating this organization that had one purpose, which was serving the community. Um, we're governed by the community. The original board members of Tezos Commons was actually all elected onto being a board member from uh, the community itself. Um, and since then, we've had uh, a few objectives and a few goals that we've been working on. So one thing is our purpose is, of course, facilitating the curation and execution of community engagement for the purpose of advancing the Tesla's ecosystem. What that means is we're just trying to uh, drive community growth, um, success and awareness. We're trying to foster a global community and helping it have a voice in the entire ecosystem. So some objectives that we work on is one community events. Um, before 2020 happened, uh, we had a ton of events going on. We implement educational programs, like uh, some of them we funded as Tazel's Capstone, which is a development program, uh, Zastron in the past, which is a free course. Um, we've helped support hackathons, technical workshops, dev meetups, and of course, community outreach. Um, so essentially that means is when people have ideas that can help contribute to the uh, Tazel's ecosystem, we like to be the bridge that can bring that idea to reality. Again, our goals, uh, we wanna serve the community and provide an equal voice. We like to foster and grow a healthy developer community because one, that's one of the key pillars of Tezos, which is development, protocol development. And of course, increase adoption awareness of XTZ and build a vibrant ecosystem of community built projects. So going on to the next topic, again, it's one of the key pillars of Tezos is the community. What is Tezos? Essentially the community is Tezos. So, the community decides the future of Tezos based on the governance mechanism, which I'll talk about later. Um, every token holder who owns tokens holds votes, and we encourage those token holders to stake their tokens into the network and have a voice. And so when proposals are submitted, um, you can seamlessly switch between validators to uh, support your ideas and support your beliefs into the protocol and which direction it, sh it should go. We are a global community. We have six global foundations. Um, we, we cover North America. There's organizations in uh, Africa. There's organizations in Europe and of course, uh, Brazil. And we have uh, about 50 community, local community groups that host meetups and events. And um, prior to 2020, we've had over a hundred community events globally. One of the key initiatives of Tezos was um, basically onboarding as many developers as possible. And so Tezos Foundation from Switzerland actually had a goal of training a thousand developers. Um, since then, uh, we've had more than 1300 Tezos developers that have been uh, doing various programs. Um, one is uh, a developer portal built on Tezos, which is developers.tezos.com. You can access this, uh, that anytime and there's lots of resources on how to build on Tezos. Um, again, what I've talked about before is we've funded a, uh, a free course called Zastrin, which enables anyone to just to jump in and build a simple dApp. There's B9 Labs, which is an accelerator program that had over a thousand applicants. And what they've done is uh, basically screen uh, certain applicants and form teams and build projects. And at the end, uh, get a certificate for, for, for the winning project. And then, of course, we have Tesla Stack Exchange. So Stack Exchange is a great developer resource for questions. We're actually one of the few blockchain protocols in this space that has its own Stack Exchange website. 
And then obviously hackathons like this one that everyone's participating in right now, which is CoinList with over a thousand registrants. We've supported a uh, large hackathons in Europe and of course, North America. So diving into the ecosystem, the Tezos network is growing. Um, we have over 400 validators. Uh, there's over, I believe, half a million wallets have opened in terms of development. So Tezos is a decentralized protocol with multiple development teams. And so some key ones are Nomadic Labs from Paris and another one is Cryptium Labs from Switzerland that have submitted proposals in the past to upgrade Tezos protocol. In terms of use cases, uh, a big one is tokenizing real world assets. Um, if you've been following the latest Tezos announcements, which you can on Telegram on the Tezos announcements channel, you'll be able to see that there's a lot of STOs um, where uh, institutions are tokenizing real estate on Tezos blockchain. Uh, there's gaming is a great use case and there's also in some projects around insurance. So going into the network, um, here are some stats. There are 450 bakers uh, or validators over six continents. There's over a hundred public delegation services, meaning uh, when people hold tokens, they can delegate their tokens to pers participate in the network. And those delegation uh, are bakers that are public that are accepting uh, people to delegate towards them. There's over 50,000 roles securing the network. And there's an unprecedented 80% of the network is participating. That means that, uh, out of the entire network, 80% of the tokens are actually staked into the network. And going more on use cases. <clears throat> so here are some interesting projects that uh, are um, using Tezos right now. To so the French Gendarmerie Cybercrime Division, um, they've actually been validating their expenses um, incurred during investigations and recording them, recording them on the Tezos blockchain. Another really cool project is Cose, which is actually founded by the co-founder of Tezos, Kathleen Brightman. It's a digital collectible card game with a built-in economy. And there's also security token offerings. Um, so you've seen Elevated Returns, Andra Capital, PTG Pactual, which is one of the uh, largest investment banks in Latin America. And there's also uh, T0, which are have all announced that collectively they'll be tokenizing, I believe over a billion dollars of real estate on Tezos. Another key pillar of Tezos, of course, is the governance. So Tezos has, Tezos has one of the most unique governance mechanisms where development teams or developers can submit a proposal and have an option of attaching an invoice to that proposal. That means that they can actually attach a certain amount of XTZ that they will request. And once uh, the proposal has been successfully voted on and implemented, the protocol will autonomously mint new tokens and be able to pay the developer for their work. Um, what we call, the second aspect is called liquid proof of stake. And so why liquid proof of stake? This was actually uh, dubbed by Jacob Arluck of TQ, who has an awesome article about this. Essentially is um, your tokens are always liquid. So when you delegate your tokens to a baker or a validator in this case, what that means is you're not locked into the network. So you're just, giving your voting rights to that baker to vote on your behalf. But let's say there's a proposal submitted and your baker does not want to um, support this proposal and will vote no. But you yourself want to, this proposal to go through. So because of the, the unique nature of Tezos governance mechanism, you can actually just undelegate your tokens uh, instantly and delegate your tokens to another baker who does support your beliefs and does support your vote of where you want Tezos to go. So your tokens are never locked in. You can always move them freely as whenever you want. Another cool pillar of the governance mechanism is Tezos Agora. You can actually follow the entire proposal um, from start to finish on tezosagora.org. It's a great resource to see information on upcoming proposals. And there's also a discourse forum where you can actually discuss the protocol proposal and also uh, learn about new ideas that are happening. It's very high quality, long form uh, discussion. Um, so the four, the four steps that Tesla's proposal goes on through right now is uh, we have, we have uh, proposal, proposal, we have uh, exploration, 
and then we also have testing, and then we have implementation. And the key is to upgrade the protocol in the most efficient manner. So, so far, Tezos has gone through three proposals. One is Athens. So that was our first successful implementation of decentralized upgrade using the Tezos governance mechanism. Um, one of the key features of that was reducing um, the staking requirement from 10,000 uh, Tezos to 8,000. So you only need 8,000 Tezos to um, be your own baker and have your own node running and uh, validating the network. And the second uh, proposal was the Babylon. That was the, a second successful implementation of protocol upgrade. It was actually a very uh, major upgrade. So one of the, key, the biggest thing changes out of that proposal was um, consolidating uh, your Tezos ad wallet address. So what that means is um, before when Tezos launched, there were, you get two wallet addresses. You get a TZ address, which operates and functions as a normal address where you can send and receive tokens and you can bake. But there's also a second portion to that, which is a KT address. And that address uh, allows you to delegate your tokens. And of course, also operate as a, as a wallet itself or where, where you can freely send and receive tokens. It's a bit confusing and we understood that. And so the community actually proposed, let's consolidate that KT address and the TC address into just one address. Why have two addresses? Just have one address where um, you can send and receive tokens, you can bake and you can delegate. And so, as you can imagine, when all the wallets launched, it was a bit of a nightmare because every single wallet had a UI that had TZ and KT addresses. So it was a, we changed the fundamental structure of the whole protocol, which obviously required a lot of, a lot of coordination with a lot of wallets to consolidate all their, their, uh, their features into one. And so lots of lessons were learned. It was a huge protocol change. And that led to the third proposal, which was Cartage. And that was more of a housekeeping, smaller uh, proposal where we just fixed any bugs that were happening. And of course, increased the gas limits um, so you can have more activity on contracts, support contracts. In terms of uh, the community itself and the governance, so what, what's cool about Tezos is that Tezos always evolves. And so, that also means the community evolves. And so we learn a lot about new technologies. And so the conversation is always engaging. Um, what we're discussing today is not gonna probably be re relevant in a year from now where we'll be discussing other features for uh, Tezos like privacy or a new governance mechanism. Um, basically Tezos is flexible. You can change almost the entire protocol itself. It's built on a very modular code base. And because of that, the Tezos community is always learning and always engaged and it's quite sticky. Um, you can also, you can see that there's a lot of uh, developer channels on Telegram, um, on Riot. We have Slack channels, um, Reddit, and of course, Tezos Agora, where there's lots of discussion on how we can advance the protocol. And so as Tezos evolves, so does the community. And that ends my presentation. Here, Spencer, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Yep. Uh, does anyone have any questions that you want to throw in? Cool. Um, awesome. If uh, no questions, then uh, yeah, as usual, this will, this presentation will be uploaded to YouTube um, by the end of the day. And um, if you guys have any uh, additional questions about Tezos uh, in general, feel free to toss it into the Hackathon Discord and the, we can um, get the right person to answer your questions. So thanks again for your time, AJ. All right, thanks, Spencer. If anyone wants to reach out to me, have questions, I'm on Telegram. I'm the Tezos Telegram group. I'm a moderator there. Uh, my username is underscore a justice eight, and I'll be happy to answer them. Awesome. Cool. Uh, have a good one, everyone. Right. Thanks, a lot. thanks, Spencer. Cheers.